Welcome back. It's Eric Arnold here in my secondary studio. Uh, it is Tuesday, the 15th of February. Had some post Super Bowl thoughts here. I just feel, I don't know, obligated to share them with you, I guess. Uh, great game, of course. Uh, I was at a party with Cincinnati Bengal fans. Obviously did not turn out the way we wanted it. I did have the Bengals to cover, so for whatever that's worth. Uh, did not get the money line, though, as the Bengals lost. A lot of sad people. Uh, tough look for the NFL. It, it I know, Ram fans, you, you, you're saying, well, we got jobbed on that T. Higgins touchdown. That should have been a penalty on T. Higgins. That should have never happened. Maybe, maybe. The fact of the matter is the refs didn't throw a damn flag the whole game practically. Just, uh, and you know damn well it's not a clean. Oh, it was such a clean game until the last two minutes, really. No, of course what happened was they just decided they were going to let him play. Let him play. So stuff that normally they would flag in the regular season, they just let it go. Well, if that's the way you're going to do it, then do it. Do it through the whole game, 60 minutes. Don't suddenly switch it up in the last two minutes where the, and of course what I'm talking about is the holding call. Oops. On third down uh, at the goal line on Cooper Cup, which that was the determinant of play in the whole game. I mean, he, they don't throw that flag. It's fourth and ten. You're probably not going to pick that up. You're probably going to lose. But it never came to that because out came the flag, and uh, from there the Rams went on to win. So that's tough. I mean, I, I feel for the Bengal fans. That's tough. But on the other hand, I mean, I can't say the Rams didn't earn it because they probably got jobbed on the T. Higgins touchdown. If the Bengals could have picked up one damn yard in the first drive they had and the last drive they had, they would have won the game. You can't pick up one yard. Your offensive line's that bad. It's a second and, what was it, second and short two different times, and they couldn't pick it up. They couldn't pick it up. It, 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 that was the change in the game. They could not, had a change in downs both times. That was the game. So the Rams earned it. I can't say otherwise. I uh, wish the refs were a little more consistent, but it is what it is. Now, what I felt like saying there, at the party, there was a young man there who was pulling hard for the Bengals. I, I was wondering if there would be anyone there like that, because these people are relatively rare uh, anymore. I, you just, they, where do you find people like this? Uh, I'm one of these people. My brother, of course, is one of these people. I'm talking about a fan, and that's short for fanatic. That's a person that's going to be upset if their team loses the big game. I mean, really upset, not just, damn, oh, we lost. Well, what's for dinner? You know, no, no, that it's going to bother them for days, if not weeks, if not months on end, that they, they are going to carry that with them. So I found one person there like that, a young man. We'll call him Frank, not his real name. And uh, Frank was there. He was ready. I mean, he was psyched up. I did not think he would be able to, and, uh, talking to him initially, I wasn't getting the real fandom. It's like, I don't know if he's a real fan. I just couldn't, I couldn't pin it down. He had some unreasonable infatuation with Nick Castellano, so he could have been a crazy person. So I wasn't sure. But as the game went on, he was checking off all the boxes and fandom. And then, of course, when it went south in the last three minutes for the Bengals, they really checked off all the boxes. Um, Frank, all I got to say is stay the course. You're on the right track. It, 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 it's not... There's nothing wrong with feeling passionate about a sports team. Uh, you paid some dues on Sunday, that's for sure. I can tell you as a Philadelphia sports fan, and uh, we've seen it all when it comes to bad and heartbreak. I think we take a backseat to no one. And what happened Sunday, 
That was particularly bad. Uh, and then the, this made it even worse here for poor Frank. He had to endure just about the worst thing possible. <laughs> and, he, and he managed to bear it up pretty well. Not only is his team losing in the most painful way possible, then he has his parents there trying to console him. <laughs> It was awful. It was awful. They're trying to tell him, come on, honey, it's just a game. It's not a game. It's not just a game. It's the goddamn Super Bowl. There's only ever been 56 of these, and I've got a chance to win one of them. Some people go their whole lives and their team doesn't win a Super Bowl. So there it is right there. You're within three minutes of winning it. And, and, and now it's slipping through your fingers and don't take it so hard. No, 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 no. It, it, I'm here to tell you, Frank, you continue to be a fan. Damn it. All those people throughout sports who feel passionately about your team, their teams, they are your cousins. They are part of your family, whether it be, you may hate these guys, the Cleveland Brown fans. You may hate those people, but they are your cousin. Buffalo Bill fans, New York Jet fans, New York Knicks fans, Philadelphia Flyer fans, Utah Jazz fans, Phoenix Suns fans. These are all your cousins. Cousins in futility. Because once you finally break through and you finally win, Oh, it makes it all that much better. See, I've got my Chicago Cubs shirt on. See that? When you finally break through, <sighs> your entire life gets better. It, it, it's not just a game. I remember when I was going to the Phillies games 10 years ago during the golden era of the Philadelphia Phillies, the Chase Utley, Cole Hamels, Jimmy Rollins, Ryan Howard Phillies. They sold that place out for two and a half straight years. Anytime you'd go to the game, whether it be a Tuesday night in April or Saturday night in July, it was a sellout. It was a party. It was a place to be. It brought the whole city together. I would argue back then, uh, my relationship with the person I went to the games with my brother. It's probably closer than it was ever. It's certainly closer than it is now. And that I largely attribute to the greatness of the Phillies back then. Or conversely, the shittiness of them now. But sports brings people together. You've got to feel passionately about it, though. You can't just have somebody there that's like they get excited when the team wins. And then they walk away when they lose. Eh, uh, I really didn't care that much anyway. Those people are dead inside. That's not the way to do it. Because they're really not that happy when the team wins. They're really not. They're pretending to be, but they're not. You can't have one without the other. So, uh, you paid some dues Sunday, Frank. Um, I feel bad for you. I hoped you'd won. Hell, let's just face it, uh, I'd rather not pay dues, you just like to just get the brass ring. You don't really want to have to suffer for 108 years like the Cubs did, or uh, uh, however many decades fill-in-the-blank team suffered. Uh, hopefully it won't take you guys that long. But once you finally get there, uh, it's, worth, it's worth it. It's worth it. So, Frank, uh, from here, us all here in the sports barn, we say to you, salute. Stay the course. You're on the right track. That's all we really got here for you in the sports barn. Uh, we're hoping to get some college basketball here as we head down the stretch towards the tournament. Uh, maybe the vacation's just about over, and I feel like doing some handicapping. I don't know baseball's getting any closer to playing games. That, that They just seem to be... I, fear, this is my, I told you people this once before, but I'll say it again. I fear that those owners are looking at that 60-game season as a success. The one they played during the pandemic, they're looking at that going, you know, we would have never thought of this otherwise, but that 60-game season really was pretty cool. All we were missing were fans. If we had been able to fill the stadiums as we could now, what a great idea. I have a feeling they're looking at it that way, and they are just going to, 
drive a hard bargain with the players and they'll either get what they want or they'll get what they want. In other words, the players will cave to their demands and you'll get a full season. Probably won't happen. Or they'll break the players and they'll get a 60-game season that they're not that upset about. I think that that could be the, the math that the owners are looking at, which is bad for baseball, bad for baseball fans. So hope I'm wrong on that. All right, very good. Well, hey, hit the like button. Uh, Going to have a um, political video up here soon, and I think what I'll do rather than have it step right on top of this one, I think I'll probably just put the political video up on Rumble. I'm starting to get the feeling we're being shadow banned on YouTube a little bit. Uh, or just nobody's watching the videos. In which case, I could stop making them, which will free up a lot of my time. So, I'm not sure which. At any rate, hey, hit the like button. If you want to, go nuts. If you're here for the first time, which I doubt, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Hey, uh, well, I figure Frank's probably here for the first time. So, again, salute from us here in the sports barn to you, Frank. And we'll uh, see you later. Eric Arnold, out.